Hello and welcome to the Simple TCP Device Tutorial. I'm Thomas with GN Technologies. In this session we'll create a Red Hawk device acting as a TCP server to receive packets. It will then use the front-end GPS interface to timestamp the incoming packets before pushing them on bulk I.O. So in total you will gain experience with creating a device, adding ports, adding properties and listeners, as well as pushing the SRI and data over bulk I.O. But before we get started, You'll probably find your life easier by using the Geon Tech Red Hawk Training GitHub repository for code blocks related to this device. The TCP server, for example, is not going to be covered in much detail since it's a modestly modified version of what you would find in the Python documentation. This leaves the rest of the design somewhat trivial because it is meant to be integrated with the sandbox session for port connections, the video of which is also available for viewing. We'll begin from the Red Hawk Eclipse IDE by right-clicking in the Project Explorer pane and selecting New Project SCA Device Project. Call it Simple TCP and the rest can remain default since this device will not execute deployed code or access the file system for deployed code. Then choose Python from the implementation and finish. As we mentioned at the start, this device is going to receive data via TCP. We'll represent each packet stream as floating point numbers at our output. So create an output port called data float out of type bulk IO data float. There will also be a user of front end GPS interface. Add a port name GPS uses with a direction of uses output. Front end ports expose the underlying remote procedure call mechanism CORBA. This device will be outputting method calls to remote provider which is why the uses port is also represented as an output. So select front end GPS as the type and finish. Next, let's update and add properties. For the sake of human readability, change the device kind and device model to socket and TCP, respectively. Then we need to add a simple property for which port we want to listen to. Notice the four categories of ports, simple, sequence, struct, and struct sequence. These roughly correspond to a primitive type an array of primitives, a structure containing primitives, and an array of those structures. This topic along with allocation configuration are covered uh, in some of our other training modules related to property kinds, events, and messaging, which you can also find at the Geon Tech Red Hawk training website. For our port number, we only need a simple property of type unsigned long. We'll call it port num. That can be its ID as well. It'll default the name to be the, the ID if you don't give it. The default value of 9999 will work nicely with a socket sign function you'll find at the Geon Tech GitHub repository mentioned previously, should you choose to also follow along with the related port connection sandbox. And at this point, we can now generate our implementation and be warned of files being added to the system. For the implementation, we'll be using socket server and stream request handler. Each handler will be spawned on new sockets, accept incoming data, and forward it to the server's internal buffer. Here's our subclass of the stream request handler, data receiver. Next, we need the server. It will accept the data pushes from its stream request handlers and provide another public interface from where our device will pull and clear the buffer in its service function. We're not dwelling on the code here because it really is very similar to the socket server TCP example available in the Python documentation for version 2.7. Devices have a launch cycle which moves from initialization to configuration and allocation potentially many times over its lifespan. And if you recall, our port number property is of the configuration kind. So when the configure method is finished, this device should be ready to start. In other words, start the server. So for ease of use, this device will start automatically once it's configured. But more than simply calling start, let's consider that if our device had another configuration property, and we want it only specifically for the configuration of the port number to cause a restart in the underlying server. For a Python implementation, you implement a non-configure for that named property. For C++ and Java implementations, you have to either if or switch your way through all the properties or establish another type of listener. For startup, the device will set a flag indicating we need to push the SRI the next time the service function is called. It then creates a new server with its own thread. And finally, it calls the base class start method so the parent class can handle setting up the service function thread. Stopping is straightforward. If the server is present, shut it down so its thread terminates. Then call the base class stop method to clean up anything from the parent class. Now we'll implement the service function, which in Python implementations is called process. 
For this method, we'll call on the server to dump the collected sample period and all the data vectors it has received. If anything was received, we move on to further processing. Here we attempt to read from our GPS interface as well. If the interface seems to be working, we use the provided timestamp as the timestamp for our upcoming bulk I.O. push. But before you ever push on bulk I.O., the associated SRI must be pushed once. The SRI is important because it contains details related to the data being pushed on bulk I.O. It should always have a matching stream ID found in the bulk I.O. stream. This is how plots and other utilities know how to associate the SRI with the data on the bulk I.O. port, which could potentially be carrying several streams. SRIs can also contain user-defined keywords using corbotypes, and without getting into the details, these types have the potential to weigh down on links, so it is important that designers get into the habit of only pushing the SRI when absolutely necessary. On bulk I.O. inputs, a flag is provided indicating for you whether or not to push the SRI again because it has changed internally. This flag we're manipulating here is really only for our producer's convenience so that we don't continue to push the SRI. And finally, as long as we had data, we used the stream ID and whatever timestamp we came up with to push the bulk I.O. packet. This concludes the simple TCP tutorial. You can now drive packets into this device, leading them with a sample period followed by a vector of samples. It will then push samples into your Redhawk system over bulk I.O. If you'd like to try this out, please follow the port connection sandbox also found here. In closing, you've gained experience in creating a Redhawk device that collects data over TCP, stamps it with time from a front-end interface, and pushes it over bulk I.O. You learned about the SRI and its importance to your data stream as well as how to add properties and listeners to specific properties in a Python implementation. Once again, I'm Thomas with Geon Technologies. Please feel free to contact us for more information, training, or consulting. Thank you for watching.